Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 22 to 24. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jew a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called both Jews and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you glad that you came today? Yes. Yes. You can take your seats in the presence of God. Beautiful. Let's read this again. For Jews request a sign and Greek seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called both Jews and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For last few weeks, we've been looking at the wisdom of God. The prophet of God, the man of God was teaching, preaching to us about the wisdom of God. Amen. So today, I'm not going to touch the wisdom of God. But the Holy Spirit has given me a task for this morning to bring the word of God to you. In a subject called spiritual, what is that? Dunamis. Say that again, spiritual dunamis. Let's go back to the verse now. As a Christian in this journey, it is so important that we carry the wisdom of God. You agree with me? Yes. Wisdom of God is so vital for a Christian. And if anybody is in, interested in growing in the Lord, the wisdom of God is key. And also the Bible reveals, the word of God reveals, Christ, the power of God. So together with the wisdom of God, we need the power of God also. Are you with me? Can you see that now? So let me explain this verse to you very quickly. Jews, Jews and Greek, they are interested in wisdom and signs. Can I ask you to come here? Johnny, come please. Johnny, come please. It's like a song, right? <laughs> so this man over here, let me explain this. He's a Jew, okay? And this gentleman over here is a Greek. <laughs> Bless you, brother. So Jews are looking for sign. Whenever Jesus spoke to a Jew, they asked for a sign. Are you with me? Whenever Jesus appeared before a Jew, they asked for a sign. But Jesus never gave them a sign. All he said, the only sign that I give you is the sign of Jonah. Do you know that? You are wondering now, what is the sign of Jonah? Do you know the story of Jonah? Fish swallows Jonah and he was in the belly for three days. That's the sign that Jesus speaks. And it is the crucifixion of Jesus. Three days in the belly of the fish and he comes out on the third day. What does that tell you? Jesus will be crucified and he will rise again on the third day. That was the only sign Jesus was talking, talking about to the Jew. So on the other hand, Greek, they are full of wisdom. 
wisdom they talk wisdom they do wisdom they walk wisdom they eat wisdom everything is wisdom for them so if someone comes and tells the jewish man about christ the crucifixion of jesus the bible says it is a stumbling block for the jew and if someone comes and tells the greek man about christ and crucifixion it's a foolishness for this man but the bible says for those who are called that is you and me for those who are called it is the power of god and the wisdom of god let me show you something very interesting here what do you need to perform signs miracles and wonders what do you need come on now what i can't hear you power of god this man is asking for a sign but jesus never gave them a sign this man is asking for wisdom and when we talk about christ crucifixion crucifixion it's it's foolishness but what but look at what jesus offers to these two people if you want a sign come receive the power of god first of all if you receive the power of god you will have a sign you will do signs you will do wonders you will do miracles amen greek is interested in wisdom jesus says come and receive me you will have the wisdom of god do you see the difference now their thoughts are carnal sign and wisdom the worldly wisdom this man is asking for a, looking for a worldly wisdom but god says no i will give you the wisdom of god if you receive christ so their thoughts are very carnal whatever the desire that you have bring it before the lord bring it under the blood of jesus he will turn that carnal thought into a spiritual thought and he will give it to you i think you missed it i think you missed it because this man is looking for wisdom this man is looking for a sign it is carnal beloved but the moment you come to christ with your thoughts jesus said come as you are it's okay come as you are come with your thoughts sign and wisdom come with those two things and when you when you when you keep it on the altar when you lay it down before jesus before the cross and before the blood of jesus he will take those carnal thoughts and he will make it a spiritual thought and he will give it to you that is what this verse explains so christ the power of god and the wisdom of god so if this man comes to christ today the greek it is not the wisdom of the world now it is the wisdom of god because he has come to christ now are you with me this man over here the jew when he comes to christ he is not going to bother about sign because he receives power now to perform signs and wonders and miracles this is what jesus can do to your lives he can take anything in your life and he can turn it around and he will give it and he will bless you that is jesus that is god So whatever that you have today this morning in your mind and your thoughts bring it before Jesus bring it before the cross 
bring it under the blood of Jesus. He will take it. He will turn it around into a spiritual thing and he will give it to you. Amen. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are going to tackle a few things here this morning. What hinders the power of God? What is this power of God? Why do I need the power of God? And how do I increase and maintain the power of God? Are you interested to know all of this? So what hinders the power of God is your carnal thought. Simple. Our carnal thoughts hinders the power of God to work in our lives. According to the scripture. They are looking for a sign. They are looking for, a, they are looking for the wisdom of this world. That is not going to help them. But the power of God and the wisdom of God will help them. So what hinders the power of God in all our lives is our carnal thought. Because when it comes to whether it is the power of God or your carnal thought, we are in the flesh, the flesh is weak, we always go for the carnal desire. When we go for the carnal desire, the power of God is limited and it is hindered. And it will be dormant in your life. So we are, we are looking at power of God, right, this morning? Okay, turn to your neighbor, say it's, it's the power of God. Yes. We are looking at the power of God. Say, we are, we are tackling the power of God. Amen. So spiritual dunamis is the power of God. Dunamis means power. Dunamis means what? The power. Spiritual dunamis. Do you think that you need this? Some of you are thinking about lunamiris now. <laughs> it is not lunamiris. It is dunamis. <laughs> Ali, are you okay? <laughs> it is not lunamiris. It is dunamis. Spiritual lunamiris. Can you believe? Say spiritual dunamis. Yeah. So we, we are going to be filled with the, this dunamis this morning. I'm telling you the Holy Spirit is in this place. To fill all of us. Our lives will never be the same again. We are going to be filled with the power of God. Amen. When you walk people will see the power of God through your life. When you speak, people will experience the power of God. When you even lift your hand, the power of God will manifest in your life. That is what the Holy Spirit is going to do in all our lives this morning, beloved. There's going to be a shift in all our lives. Spirit of God says, there's going to be a great shift. The moment we know about the power of God, there's going to be a great shift. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Power of God and the wisdom of God is like your left hand and right hand. You can't live without your left hand or without your right hand. Correct? You can't live without your left eye or your right eye. You need both eyes, right? Just like that, the power of God and the wisdom of God goes together. We need both. We can't say, no, we don't need the power of God. No, 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 no. Then we are a failure. 
we need the wisdom of god and we need the power of god both goes together that is why paul is writing to first Corinth, corinthians and says in in first corinthians otherwise he would have never mentioned power of god and the wisdom of god otherwise he would have mentioned christ the wisdom of god or else christ the power of god no he says christ the power of god and the wisdom of god so we need both some are being fooled saying that we know we don't need the wisdom some are being fooled saying we don't need the power no beloved we need both amen you better say something this morning if you are receiving i said we need both we need the power and we need the wisdom if you want to see your life is going somewhere in a to a to a higher dimension we need you need the power and the wisdom if you are interested in ascending in spiritual things we need the power and the wisdom if you need acceleration in your life you need the power of god otherwise you will be going in the highway 40 kilometers per hour no good when god wants you to go in 200 kilometers per hour when you receive the power of god you will drive fast you will accelerate why christians are so dull today why christians are failing today why christians are running to you know all these crusades and for their healing because there is no power in them if you have the power of god you can command the sickness to leave If you have the power of God you can speak to your family If you have the power of God you can speak to your finances If you have the power of God you can speak to your children If you have the power of God you can speak to your business beloved If you have the power of God you can do anything in this world The problem we don't have the power of God in our lives Oh let me rephrase it The Bible says when we receive the Holy Spirit the power comes to us. So when you receive you receive the power. But it is dormant. It is not working. There are few things that we need to do for the power of God to manifest in our lives in for for the power of God to increase and for us to maintain the power of God. Luke chapter 24 verse number 49 Let's look at this power what is this power What is this power And ye are witness of these things 49 and behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be Come on read with me until ye be endued with power on high So Jesus is saying to his disciples guys go to Jerusalem and wait there When you go there you will receive the power until you receive the power don't do anything today even after we receive the power we are not doing anything so power of god is very important that's why jesus is saying go to jerusalem wait there tarry there and i will give you the power my father in heaven will send 
the Holy Spirit and, he, and then you will receive the power. So the power word here is dunamis. Now let's go to Acts chapter 1 verse number 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Can you see the word there, power again? It is the same word as Luke 26 that we read. It is the same word, dunamis. Dunamis. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you will receive the power of God. How many of you have received the Holy Spirit in this, in this room now, this morning? Only few? Come on, lift your hands. See. See the hands, number of hands. You are a power generator, beloved. There is power inside of you. Amen. You can do wonders with this power that is in you. There's electricity in you. You have received the Holy Spirit and you have the power of God in you. Don't, don't let the power of God go dormant into your, in your lives. Don't let it happen. Make use of this power of God in you. What is this power of God? Influence of the Holy Spirit on an individual life with outward manifestation. What is the power of God? Influence of the Holy Spirit on an individual's life with an outward manifestation. This is the power of God. Now don't look, it, look, look for, you know, this... In Google, it is not there. <laughs> this is something Holy Spirit gave me. Okay, so what is power of God? Influence of the Holy Spirit on an individual life with outward manifestation is called the power of God. How much are you being influenced by the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit influences you this morning? You have the Holy Spirit in you. That's good. But is he working in you? That is the problem. Is he doing something in your life? Is the Holy Spirit is alive in you? Is he influencing your life? Well, you need to answer that question to yourself. See, when we receive this power, it is very important that we walk with this power of God. And it is important for us to maintain this power of God as well. Okay? So let me show you one more scripture. Ephesians chapter 3 verse number 20. Very important scripture, beautiful scripture. Now to who? Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to what? Come on now, you got to read, you got to say that. According to what? According to the power that works in us. Can you see that? Okay, let's read that again. One, two, three, go. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think According to the power that works in us. Now some can argue really, they can argue. Power of God is found in a ringtone. <laughs> power of God is found in a cell phone. No beloved, it is not 
found in a cell phone. When it is off, we will find the power of God. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Some can say the power of God is, you know, once we receive, that's it, uh, it is there. Well, I'm saying no. Power of God is something that we need to cultivate. Amen. We need to cultivate. If we don't cultivate, it will not grow. If you have that, this thinking once I receive the Holy Spirit, I have the power of God. Yes, you have the power of God, but in a very low level. It is, your, it is your responsibility and my responsibility to cultivate the power of God in our lives. The power of God that I carry is different to what Pastor Ranil carries. It is different to Sasanka, what he carries. It is different to what Johnny carries. It is different to what Stefan carries. Are you with me? The power of, power of God has different levels. Say different levels. Power of God has different levels. And it is our responsibility to cultivate this power of God in our lives. Amen? Okay. Someone can say, no, the power of God cannot be increased. Beloved, I want to show you this word, according. Can you see the word according there? According. Highlight the word according, Nalaka, please. The moment when you read the word according, what does that tell you? There are levels. Are you with me? There are levels. When it comes to the power of God. So which level are you in this morning? According to the power of God. God can do exceedingly and abund abundantly above all that we ask or think. Amen. He can do anything. He can do anything that you ask. He will do it. There's no doubt. But there's a problem. According to the power of God. That works in you. Can you see? So it is. It is utmost important. That we increase. In the power of God in our lives. You've been asking for a lot of things from God. But you are thinking. Why my answers are not coming. Beloved this is the problem. The power here. Is the same word. That we read in the book of Acts chapter 1-8. And the book of uh, gospel of Luke. It is the same word. Dunamis. So when you receive the Holy Spirit. Don't just sit and wait. You've been asking for God to bless. Do something in your house. You've been asking. You've been asking God to do something. In your husband's life you've been asking the lord to do something in your finances you've been asking the lord do something in, with my life but nothing happens because there's only very little power of god is working in our lives this is the problem So, can I show you how to increase in this power of God? Anyone is interested? Anyone, anyone is interested in increasing this power in your life? And most importantly, we need to maintain this power of God in our lives. We cannot fluctuate in this power. Fluctuate unana current giyama light na. The house will be in the dark. 
Can you see? If the fluctuation happens in, with the power of God, there's no light in you. There's no light. Okay. Here is number one. Romans chapter 5 verse number 5. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give this very soon to you. Okay. And, and, and we are done. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So it is very important for you to understand that there is a connection between the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no power. Amen? Amen? Now I want you to Stay with me, focus. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no power in our lives. We can't separate the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Okay? We cannot separate the Holy Spirit and the power of God. So the Bible says, when the Holy Spirit comes, He brings the love of God into our hearts. Beloved, we need to love the unlovable. If we can't love the unlovable with the love of God that we have received through the Holy Spirit, we are losing the power of God. Because, hmm, when the Holy Spirit comes, we receive the power. Say, say, say after me. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive the power. So you want to, you want to maintain this power and you want to increase in this power, then we got to love the unlovable. Can you love someone whom you don't like. Can you? Jesus said, love your... That's right. Thank you very much. Do you see now? Are you interested in growing in the power of God? Do you want to main maintain this power of God in your life? then love the unlovable. How many people you have rejected? I have done this, that's why I'm preaching. You know, there was a lady, elderly woman, once she was on the street. I didn't even, that time I wasn't married, I need to tell you that. <laughs> I was with my mom and sister. I didn't even ask their permission. Very elderly, on the street, no place to go, no food to eat. I just went, spoke to her, come with me, I'll take you home. I just took to my place and kept her there for seven days. I don't know who this woman is. Worse than a beggar, I'm telling you. Smelly. No good clothes. Haven't eaten for many days. Can you love the unlovable? If you can love the unlovable, the power of God will begin to work in your life. This is one of the secret in my life. If people are coming to you, running to you, looking for something, looking for an answer, at least to pray with them, then there's a sign to say that you have the love of God and you are a person who loves people. 
Amen. They are coming for the wisdom of God to you. They are coming for the power of God to you. Only one person is receiving. So we need to change all of this. It is good to attend Sunday service. Very good. But we need to do something. Let us love the unlovable beloved. Amen. Amen. Okay. You want to go deeper? Sure? Sure? Okay. Yeah, I like that. Only one person is lifting. Yes, yes. Want to go deeper. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Keep playing that. Chapter 6, verse number 16 and 17. Okay. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Continue. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. My second secret to you this morning is two becoming one. The Bible says when we do something with a harlot, do you know who is an harlot? Not pilot. Harlot is a prostitute. Don't be so holy. Be free in the house of God. When we sleep with a prostitute, we are no more two. We become one. That is what the Bible says. Becoming one in the sense, the spirit of the prostitute and the spirit of the man that who sleeps comes together. Know ye not that he which is joined to an secretary, sorry, Know ye not that he which is joined to the next door neighbor's wife Know ye not that he which is joined to an your servant These things happen The moment that happens that man and this woman become one we cannot separate it unless you bring that man under the blood of Jesus to break the curse. Are you listening to me? That's why you see some men are, you know, lunatic. They have money. They have everything. But they don't know where they are going. Why? They have done something. Because that spirit has get got into this man's spirit. That woman is a crazy woman. She sleeps with hundred men. And all of that spirit comes to this man. And this man goes cuckoo. Your husband is cuckoo now. You are wondering why. This could be the reason. Verse number 17. In the same way, beloved, in the same way, when the Holy Spirit comes to our lives, to this body, to this body, we become one. There is no separation. No one can separate that. When the Holy Spirit comes, he is so one with us now. He is so one with me now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I walk with 
like Jesus. Now I, I talk like Jesus. I do things like Jesus. I see things like Jesus. I speak like Jesus. I do things like Jesus. I heal the sick like Jesus. I prophesy just like Jesus. Why? The Holy Spirit is in me. Now my spirit and the spirit of God Almighty is one with us. When the Holy Spirit comes and when he dwells in us. The Bible says when we receive the Holy Spirit, what? We receive the power of God. Amen. Don't forget that. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive the power of God. When the Holy Spirit comes and when he takes over our spirit, our mind begins to change. This is what I want to tell you. You want to increase in the power of God. You want to maintain this power of God in your life. The mind has to change. Unless the Holy Spirit is in us, it will never happen. Are you catching? Final, third one. Is found in Colossians chapter 3 verse number 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Highlight that entire Seek those things which are above. Highlight. Seek those things which are above. Can you read that for me please? The highlighted one. Again. One more time please. Seek those things which are above, beloved. Secret number three for me, through my life, I started to seek for the things of God, which are above, not of this world, which are above. You want to increase in the power of God? You want to maintain this power that you have received, then begin to seek the things which are above. Amen. Amen. Okay. So now you should ask a question, how do I seek for the things above? Okay. Good question. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 10 to 12. But God has revealed them to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Okay. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God. That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Who knows best about yourself? Who knows? Sorry. Who knows best about yourself? You only know, auntie. Very good answer. Who knows best about you? Lord, that's a lie. Uncle, who knows the best about you? Son. It's okay, just give me myself. An answer. Huh? Myself. Yourself. Fantastic. Who knows best about you, sir? Yourself. That's right. Who knows best about you? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. Okay. Who knows best about you? You. That's right. Fantastic. Give them a good hand, please. All your answers are right, but the best answer is you know 
better about yourself right your spirit knows who you are the spirit of jonathan knows who jonathan is damian will not know who jonathan is but jonathan knows who he is really you know who you are your spirit knows who you are in the same way beloved the spirit of god knows who god is amen the spirit of god knows who god is who is the spirit of god we call him holy spirit holy spirit knows who god is so what happens when the holy spirit comes to us when the holy spirit gets into your life and one with your spirit he begins to search for the things of god that is why the bible says it is important for us to seek the things which is above so how are we going to do how are we going to seek for the things above through the holy spirit you want to maintain this power of god in your life you want to increase in this power of god in your life seek for the things which is above amen hallelujah thank the lord what's the first secret beloved loving the unlovable what is the second secret having the mind of christ for us to have the mind of christ the holy spirit has to get into our lives it has to be one with our spirit no more two otherwise it will be body soul spirit and holy spirit four things no it cannot happen have you ever thought of that you have a spirit you have a soul you have a body so when the holy spirit comes where does he live See, when the Holy Spirit comes, it is not our spirit anymore. It is His spirit. Amen. When that happens, we will have the mind of Christ. The third one. What is that? Seeking. the things of god things which are above loving having and seeking love the unlovable have the mind of christ and seek the things of god if we can do these three things and there are many more i'm telling you there are many more secrets there are many more if i give you the mic you will preach better than me you know greater secrets but if we can do these three beloved the the power of god will begin to manifest in our lives it will increase in our lives and it will begin to do something in our lives amen it will it will it will never fade away it will never fade away it will never fade away the power of god will keep on increasing in our lives when the power of god comes to your life beloved beautiful things happens beautiful things happens you will begin to speak to people you will win souls to the kingdom of god amen you will you will you will heal the sick you will start to prophesy you will begin to do things what god wants you to do you will begin to see the heavenly things you will see greater things in the kingdom of god when the holy spirit comes and when you are increasing the spiritual realms will begin to open in your lives when the spiritual realms begin to open for you and for your family things will begin to happen you don't even have to ask for for god he is much more able and exceedingly he will do it for you even before you could think 
or ask, He will do it for you, beloved. That is the power inside in you. And let this power of God begin to work in your lives from today onwards. Don't let the power of God go dormant in your life. Let the Holy Spirit work in you. Let the power of God work in you, beloved. Hallelujah. God can do greater things for you.